Hi there, Laura here from Get Organized HQ here to talk about one of my favorite things that is digital organization. I love that and in particular how to organize your digital photos. Now I don't have time in this video to show you the whole entire process and the complete system so I'm just going to share with you my top three tips for organizing your digital photos and I guarantee if you do just these three very simple things it's gonna be a game changer for you and your digital photos. Now, if you wanna dive even deeper, I have an entire course called Organize Your Digital Life. Go ahead and click the link down below if you wanna check that out. So there is nothing you can do that will make more difference than regularly going through and deleting your digital photos. And I know that because they don't take up literal space, it can, it can feel like, oh, what, what's the harm in keeping like 50? So I'm gonna go through and show you kind of how I delete um, these. These were my kids' first day of school this year. And you can kind of see how many of the same I got. And this is very normal. Like we all do this when there's a birthday party and we have like 12 of them blowing out their candle and 12 of them opening their gift. And you, know, you just take a whole bunch to try to get the best photo. So what you wanna do is go ahead and delete those as soon as possible. Now, what I am showing you here, this is actually um, the native Apple Photos app on my computer, on my Mac, but um, I wanted, it's easier for you to see on the screen, but you can do this exact same thing on your phone. And to tell you the truth, most of the time, I do this on my phone because instead of like setting aside separate time every day that I'm gonna do this, I like to kind of fit it in the margin. So like if I'm waiting at the doctor's office, if I'm just chilling in the evening, kind of watching TV, I'll delete a few photos. If I'm like waiting in the car by your line at school, something like that, that's when I would do this. And if you keep up with it on a regular basis, I think the ideal would to be to do it daily, especially if you're a person who takes a lot of photos, but at least weekly go through and delete all of your duplicates. And, and think about it. This is the one thing you can do that's gonna make everything else that you do with your photos easier. So when it comes time to refresh, you know, your photo wall display, or maybe you're like me and you literally have no photos on your wall, when you're like, okay, I'm ready to put some on my wall, you don't have, you know, 182 pictures from the birthday, you only have your top 20 or something like that. That's gonna make that easier. When you go to make like a family photo album or a family yearbook, it's gonna be way easier because now you don't have so many. And even if what you're doing is, you know, like sometimes those memories pop up on your phone, that's really about the only time I go through and look at photos. I don't just like open up my app and start looking through them. It's even more enjoyable when I've already pared it down and I don't have, you know, five pictures where somebody's eyes were closed and they're not looking at the camera. Like the photos I do have are good and they're not a bunch of repeats. So no matter what you do, just like if you had a stack of 30,000 physical photos sitting there, it would be overwhelming. The same is true with digital, even though they don't take up space. So delete every single day or at least every single week and you will only thank yourself later. And if you do nothing else, this will be a game changer. So I wanna show you how I do this uh, for my kids' first day of school because while it sounds easy, I will be honest and tell you it is, you have to make a lot of decisions and it can be difficult. So this is how I do it. Okay, so first of all, this one is just, he's not even looking at the camera. I don't even know why I took that picture. So it gets deleted. That was pretty easy. Um, when I click delete on here, it deletes from all of my, my devices. No, I, I like that one. Um, he's looking right at the camera. He's very proud. It's like his first day of school. Um, that one, he, his eyes aren't really making contact with the camera. This one's definitely better. So this one's going to go. Easy so far. Okay, now it's going to start to get a little bit harder. Now this is already, is this one's pretty easy. I mean, not, I don't know why I took that photo. Maybe I was just... Maybe it was an accident, but they're, neither one of them are looking at the camera. Okay, now here's where it starts to get, like we have several that are exactly the same. So I kind of play the game of which one is better, this one or this one, okay? Of the two, it's very easy. This one is better, so the worst one gets deleted. And if you play this game for a while, pretty soon you're gonna be like, I only have one left, all right? So this one's okay. I mean, I wish his eyes were looking a little bit more at the camera. So of these two, which one is better? I would say the second one is better because she looks about the same and his eyes are more looking at the camera. So I'm going to leave the worst of the two. Then we're going to keep going. Okay, this one's definitely better than this one because again, she looks very similar and his eyes are closed. Uh, his eyes are very closed. I kind of did like how he had the whole thing in the background, but with his eyes closed, I just can't see ever choosing 
to display like this photo over this photo, for example. Um, the only thing I will say is like every once in a while, I might keep two that are similar. Like I wanna make sure that I have at least a picture or two that shows the background of our whole front door. Because come, you know, 20 years, if we haven't lived in this house for 15 years or something, we're gonna wanna remember that. And even like things like that little wreath are gonna bring back memories. Oh yeah, I remember when we got that and when our door looked like that, things like that. Um, this one is, eh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, oh. no, definitely not gonna, I mean, he's just not looking at the camera. So this, this is actually easier. Sometimes they're even harder. Okay, he's really not looking at the camera. Um, also, I will say doing this helps you be a little bit more judicious when you actually take the photos. I think sometimes I don't know how to get my subjects to do exactly what I want them to do. So I make up for it by taking like 50 pictures, but one good picture is better than 50 mediocre pictures. So you can try to work a little harder when you're actually taking the photos. So this one, his eyes are kind of closed. Now this one I really like because they're so crisp and clear in the picture. Like it's just so close up. That may have been portrait mode. Yes, it's, it says um, right here that it was portrait mode. Um, so that, um, makes like I just like that even though his his eyes are not um this one is slightly I have a slight preference for this one over this one you can hardly even tell when I, when I mouse from one to the other you can hardly even tell there that's how similar they are never are you going to need both of those pictures this one he's looking down slightly more so that's why I'm going to delete that one and they're almost exactly the same other than that oh my goodness I mean look at how much the same you can kind of see his face move but that's it um, we're deleting this one because his, he's looking down even more on that one. Ooh, now this is where it gets tricky, okay? So in this one, I like her expression slightly better, although I wish she had a big grin. In this one, eh, she looks very much the same. He's looking a little bit more at the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, so in this one, I love him, but her eyes are closed. I might keep it if I have none where he's really looking at the camera, because if I look back through the ones that I have kept, I have four now. Okay, there's one of just him. I'm not counting that. I have four of the two of them. Now, I probably should pare down from four. Okay, so I need to decide if I really want one with the whole door. The only reason to keep this one is because you can see the whole entire door. And I think I do want that. Um, this is their best expression, so we're keeping this one. I, man, I'm really torn. I, that is like my favorite expression of his, but I mean, I'm never going to use that picture because her eyes are closed and I'm not, I mean, someone maybe somewhere could Photoshop it, but I, I'm going to guarantee you I'm not going to do that. Um, and her eyes are just completely closed. Um, I could try to crop it. I usually don't do this while I'm doing it, but every once in a while I'm like, is it even possible to crop? So let's see um, if I can do that by cropping, um, cropping on him or if it's just going to look bizarre because I don't mind cropping her out because we know we're never going to use that. So we're going to see if we can make it look halfway normal or if it's just going to look really weird. Like it's already starting to look weird if you ask me. Maybe, okay, let's just see what that looks like. Mm. So then when I see it in that context, I don't even love that expression. So for that reason, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to this photo. And now we have it pared down to three. And I go through one more time. Do I want those three? I actually think that I do. Um, so that's how I pared down. Um, and just go through every day and do that with every event and you're going to be light years ahead. The second piece of game changing advice that I can give you is always start with organizing your photos with the current time and go forward. Don't try to go address your backlog. So let's say that you're watching this and it's April 17th of 2023. Start with April 17th or you can consider starting with April 1st. Don't even go back to March. Don't do it. I know it's tempting and here's what can happen. You maybe watch this video and you get really inspired and excited and motivated, which is great. And you're like, I'm going to tackle my last 10 years of photos. So you start with like 
you know, 1990 or something like that. You probably don't even have digital photos from then, but you start way back and you never get caught up to the current moment. So the whole entire time you're making a little bit of progress on your backlog, but as photos are coming in, you're not dealing with those and you're just, you never are going to get there if you're constantly adding more. So start where you are. Also, as you start where you are, you're going to learn a lot. So maybe you thought you wanted a certain system or you thought it was worth it to like take the extra time to put the photos in a certain album or something like that, you know, digitally, but you realize that's not that important. So if you do it for two or three months with your current photos, and then you want to go address your black backlog, you'll be much better equipped and prepared to do it. And you can do it in a way that really makes the most sense. And here's the other thing, even if you never got to your backlog or Maybe you don't address your backlog nearly as thoroughly as you do your current pictures. Like going forward, you're going to like delete them all, all that, you know, you're going to have a process for them. Maybe you never get your backlog as thoroughly, but I will tell you in five years, even if all you do is start today and go forward, you're going to thank yourself and you're going to be wishing that you'd started even if you have a backlog. And then when you do address your backlog, I recommend going from most recent to oldest. It's just easier to do the more recent. And so, for example, let's say you started your new system on April 1st, you might do March, February, January. Um, I, I do occasionally go by years, especially the further back I get, the, the less it makes a difference what month it was. So I might, for example, say that it's April 2023, I might go do March, February, January, and then I would do all of 2022 starting in January, and then I would do all of 2021. So that's kind of how I would address the backlog, but do not wait until you've addressed that to start doing the, the proper systems going forward. Now we're gonna go back to these pictures that we've pared down. And the last thing that you can do that is a game changer is just make sure you actually favorite your favorites. Um, it doesn't really matter what photo app you use. Almost all of them have a favorite feature. Again, you can do this directly on your phone. I usually do. And anything that I just particularly love, I'm gonna click favorite on. So I would never favorite all three of these. I would ask myself if I was going to hang one of these on the wall, which one would it be? And it's definitely this one. This is one is just clear. I like it the best. So I'm going to favorite it. Now do not overthink this. The problem comes in is when you stress out too much about what criteria you're going to use for favorite. And is this one really supposed to be a favorite? Do your best. And you're already going to be light years ahead than if you didn't favorite at all. So if you know, you just love the picture, favorite it. If you think you'd want to hang it on your wall, favorite it. If you think you definitely want to put it in your family yearbook, favorite it. Then you're going to have a huge head start when you go to do anything else because not only have you deleted all of the duplicates, you now also have your favorites. And most programs have what they call smart albums, smart filters, something like that, where you can say, show me all the pictures from this time frame that are favorites. And so when you're going to like say refresh, you know, what's hanging on your wall, you've already got it pared down. Or when you're going to make that family album, You've already got it pared down. You already know what your favorites and which one are ones are definitely going in. And that's going to make it so much easier. I hope those tips have really helped you to get your digital photos under control. And if you want to dive even deeper and see my entire process for that and so many other things when it comes to organizing your digital life, you know, you still got passwords and files and bookmarks and all those things, then go ahead and click the link down below to check out my full course on how to organize your digital life.